And what do we have here but the PZ-20, the carburetor everybody loves to hate. Nobody likes to use it. It's $13. This is the cheapest I've ever seen it, and that was on Amazon, and that's coming with an air filter and a fuel filter. Is this thing that bad? I mean, if you're on a budget and you want a little bit more on your motorized bike with your air fuel, you know, air fuel mixture, it depends upon how much air and fuel you get on it. This would be a perfect size carburetor. But nobody likes it. Let's see if we can do something with it. And we're going to start out with a great big old piece of uh, block aluminum.
So the margin for error for this is like zero. And we notice how the holes are offset here. So to get these lined up, we're going to have to mill these down this way. And you're asking, well, so if you're going to do all that, why, why the block? To get it out away from the jug, it's too close in there. And we could do that, I guess. But I had other ideas because I wanted to go the square around. So that's the way we're going to go. And like I said, the very crude tools I have, mar margin for error is not very much. And okay, there we go. And it came out good. So now we've got to attach this to that, and this to that, that to this, and we have to align this hole with that hole. Because you would literally have this, and this is too big for this right here. So that's the reason for the block. Now if there's some other way, whoop, well I just threw that $14 cart right away. It's all right. If there's another way to put bolts in here, which I'm going to have to get something that fits snugly in that. Okay. Well, that socket does a beautiful job for that. So. And you always improvise. So we're just a little bit high and to the right of these bolts right here. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. But we're high and right. Pretty much my, like, I'm not going to say it. The, uh, I could literally cut this off right here, make a slot, and that, actually, that socket's got that thing held pretty good. So that was a spur of the moment thing. So, yeah, I could notch this and do that. So, but, and then again, I could come this way and catch this bolt right here. Then you'd have to line everything up. That's kind of what I was trying to avoid. So, I'll have to look at this a little bit. Because if I could come, like, right here and drill and tap it, five millimeter and then cut a slot then that would hold this so you have to look at this thing it's like the holes are offset on it they're not in line with the center of the bore so it's kind of crazy but it's proprietary towards a particular intake in a particular vehicle which is fine uh I like the O-ring idea, and we have plenty of room there for it, and that, actually that socket holds that thing pretty good right there. So, and I could do that too, but and there was another thing I was thinking of, is drilling and tapping this and putting a tab on here and a tab on here and then to hold it up against there. Okay, this is what we come up with. Uh, the transition, I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not, but the transition from carburetor to intake to intake to motor is pretty good. Straight through. Now, how did I hold it on and how do I keep it in position? Okay, so I'm going to take it apart for y'all. And somebody the other day asked me, they said, they were in my shop, they said, Kevin, you got a lot of taps. I said, they said, uh, do you have them in metric too? I said, yeah. They laughed a little bit. So you got a one millimeter tap? I go, yeah, I got a one millimeter tap.
That is a one millimeter tap. I'm going to get it in where you can see it. Yeah. Oops, I lost the other one. Okay. Yep. I had three. Broke one. Don't know why. But yeah, I got a bunch of stupid stuff in this shop. So when it comes to making mistakes, I can make them a lot more, a lot less painful than most because of all the dumbass stuff I got. All right. So what I did was, if you can see right here, those are right on the edge or right on the cusp. Actually, this choke lever still works. You might see a hair bit of it, which I'm going to bend this a little bit more. I have to take it out to do it, but that's okay. Uh, and if you ever try to take this off, remember one thing. They stippled the end of this. So it ain't going to be easy to come on. So I'm probably going to bend it on the carburetor. But if you can see, then the bolts are holding that. So what's keeping it in position, I'm going to take these off. And the good thing is, you be able to get to the bolts easy. You know? Quick on, quick off, which is never a bad thing. And, and I know the comments are going to be, why in the hell did you waste your time and my time watching your damn video over a damn piece of, you know what, a carburetor? We don't know that because flopping around on a hose to me isn't, isn't way of cry. I had to do it on a twisted T-bike, but I bought a reinfer, reinforced turbo hose so it didn't bounce around a whole bunch. So. It's got an O-ring in it, so it's going to seal good. And I've cut two dowel pins, so that registers it to where it's got to go every time. And then this will bolt naturally to the jug. Now I had to trim these down a little bit, as you can see on the video. I did more to get into this too much, but I still got plenty of room and you can actually see the imprint of the O-ring. So these are proprietary to this block and that is it right there. And y'all are, are probably saying, why in the hell did you waste your time? And it's kind of thin right there, but what I'm doing with this is uh, I'm going to be uh, putting a bushing in right here, a brass bushing. and. You know, this fits good and everything. I wanted to go square it around. I didn't want to, uh, you know, I wanted a good trans transition between the carburetor and this. The hose the thing when you bolt it on, I've seen some people bolt it on the stock intake and this thing starts getting really long and long and long and long. And whenever the short period of time that you have the actual draw through the carburetor from the uh, upstroke of the piston with that long you might not be getting the full charge that you want now things got a cute little old pilot valve and I'm pretty sure I've got jets for it I think this is gonna work on this block is it worth the effort that I put into it I don't know, but it's been raining for three or four days. Well, not three or four days. It's been raining since th uh, Thursday. It started raining Thursday and hasn't let up since. Yeah, it's kind of wet out here right now. So we've had a huge amount of rain in the past, you know, on Thanksgiving Day. This is Saturday. Uh, but tomorrow's supposed to be nice, so we're going to do a, not a speed test, but a speed test on the new bike, because that's what I was going to make this for. And I can get another carburetor. I can get another V8, VM18. I can do that. There's, there's no issues there with that. I can do that, but I don't want to do that. I'm, I'd rather spend $13. And I've had this thing for over a year. And I pulled it apart, looked at it, and I said, well, there really ain't nothing too bad about it. 
except it's screwy mounting. So, but we're going to run that wide open and then see what kind of, I'm going to put the GPS on it and see what kind of miles per hour we get. We're also going to check the uh, kilometer speedometer, see if it's right or wrong. Uh, but other than that, guys, hit like and subscribe. It's a simple thing. It helps the channel out. Uh, I got some really important stuff coming up soon. And I know a lot of YouTubers say that, but I do. And uh, leave me a comment, which I know I'm going to get some comments on this one. So, <laughs> we're going to do a speed test on that in the next video. And then we're going to put this on there and do some jetting on it. Which the jetting will be easy because you can come right on and off and you don't have to worry about a gasket. You know, you can pull the carburetor off pretty easy. So, so it's a win-win. Uh, and then we're going to, we're going to see if it, if it helps it or hurts it or if it's worth the money. Uh, if it's not worth the money, I mean, $13 and that's air filter and fuel filter. I mean, really? And I could have cut this shorter, I guess more narrower but I wanted to get it away from the jug a little bit and it's about the same size as that one so I'm probably going to scallop some of these corners on the mill maybe a little bit because I got the outline of the carburetor on there good and, and I could chuck this like that and then just knock this off and then knock this off and I could probably come some more right here and cut this off. So I don't know. I'll, I'll probably lighten it up some. Because all the bolts are in line with this. And I was hoping that the bolts in this one would be high enough and wide enough out of the way where I could put another bolt right there, but, but that didn't happen. So getting to, these are different areas because you can get to this side pretty easy but this side over here you got everything in the way so that's kind of the way it is so leave me a comment hit like and subscribe and whenever i put up uh shout outs to channels you know you might see some channels not have any videos on them or anything like that everybody doesn't have to make videos to contribute on youtube and the channels i put up there that don't do videos it's the information I get from my videos that helps me so much. So you want to subscribe to those people and you want them to come back on some of your videos because they have a wealth of knowledge that they will share with you. And uh, the people that do post videos, we post fun videos, we post informative videos, and all of those channels are really good. There's some channels out there that are toxic, uh, to say the least, uh, but you're going to have that anywhere you go. So, uh, like I say, leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. Peace.